On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about mobility before exercising. We talk about football injuries, right? I don't even know. Did we really? To the knee. I don't even know what they're doing behind me. Testing knee injuries. Yeah, testing knee football injuries. And then we talk, we talk about the order that we do things. That was the worst intro ever. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up here at, where are we? Champion. <laughs> you just drank Champion it. and Dave's Flutter Kick. So we're up here at Champion in Boston. Uh, Mike, Dan, Dave, Lenny, you know everybody by now, right? Who don't you know? Take your coat off, stay know? a while. Is there? Make sure we're in good focus. I want to focus on Dave Tilly. Perfect. Anyway, we are here. All of us were here here to ask your questions. Make sure you check out everybody's websites to, uh, you know, ins- I guess Instagram's a thing now too, not the data, but check out everybody's Long Instagram. Enough. Why don't we do that? Let's do that right now. Len Mac PT. Yeah, right? Len Mac PT. Which one do you want to do? Shift. Shift. Shift underscore movement science. Oh, I thought it was just shift. I'm like, no way. You yeah, just that'd be sick. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I tried hard. It didn't work out. So shift underscore movement science, yeah. Dan. Fitness pain free. Yeah, you, na- you nailed that. Yeah. You did the marketing. Yeah. Yeah. You have all those. We know that. Mike Skidero, DPT. DPT. Take that one. Yeah. Take oh, that one. Right. Boom. Boom. <laughs> master of letter. Got me. Just a mere master. Nice. We're here with Alicia Archangelo from St. Francis University. Uh, I think that's her nickname. Yeah, the boat. Her nickname is. Oh. Wait, just like two together. We have different like one, two, three. Oh. Harmony. That was. I'm the better one. That doesn't make sense. Oh. Yeah, I shouldn't be. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like boys. You know, boys and men. You know, the boys and men lost the baritone guy. Really? You notice that? Solo like, career. What are they like, doing? Football. He has solo night? career like voiceovers. It's not the same without the guy going. Hey, baby. <laughs> Yeah, that one. What are we talking about? <laughs> and, and Andrew Kirschbaum from <laughs> Oakland <laughs> University, which has nothing to do with California. That's Love his man. nickname. That's his nickname. What? That's so long. It has nothing to do with California. <laughs> what? Andrew, it has nothing to do with California. Not California. Oh. Anyway, it's a lot. It's a mouthful. Who would like to start this episode? Right. <laughs> oh, no system. Uh, Ali- Alicia's <laughs> dying to start. I'm hesitant yeah. about this name. Okay. Perfect. Nailed it. From New York, if you haven't already covered this, I would like to know your thoughts on IASTM foam rolling and stretching before an exercise session. All right, instrument assisted foam rolling and stretching before exercising. So, you don't want us to talk about specifically, but what do we think? I mean, we all sure. clearly <laughs> do that here, right? Sure. Like that's part of like our system of how we do soft things. tissue prep on steroids. Right. So I like. I mean, you kind of cover a little bit of everything. I don't know if you necessarily have to pick like instrument assisted versus like foam rolling, for example. But if you know, I mean, what are what are some of our core principles? Like we do some we do something for soft tissue. We do something for you know static mobility if you need it, or dynamic mobility, or those types of things. I don't know. What am I missing? I think, I don't know if this is the reason why, but I get this question a lot, and I think it's because of kind of like the mobility wad world with Kelly Starrett. He talks a lot about doing your soft tissue work after you've exercised and doing static stretching before, just because if you do a lot of soft tissue before, his thought is that it's going to turn muscles off, right? Um, which is kind of the opposite of what our research is showing. Yeah. But generally, I, I, I like what we do. I like to do a lot of soft tissue stuff before, and if you're going to pick when to do the static stretching, probably afterwards, so you don't have the decreases in performance and strength that come from the static stretching. Um, I don't know if that's specifically what he's asking. Yeah, no, that's I like that's a good answer. I didn't know that that's a, that was Kelly's stance. Is he firm on that, or is that just like a common recommendation? I think that I don't think that's what they teach, him, but, but you know, yeah, I, I haven't I mean, been to his course, so I, I could be completely wrong. Sorry, Kelly, if I messed up. Yeah, sorry, but, Kelly. I mean, no, I mean, it, it sounds good. I mean, I think like you know, current research coming out is like you know, back in the day, I don't know how many years ago it was, is like we started showing some studies there. If you do static stretching, you have like a decrease in like power output immediately after, like in a lab setting and like immediately after. And I think, I think that got very popular saying don't do static stretching prior to your activities. But I think new research is coming out and it's getting better. And I don't know if anyone jump in if they need yeah. it, but it's, I, I think it's shown that that effect is quite short in duration, right? Um, and I think it's also been shown that if you do your dynamic mobility after that, then it does not result in a decrease in performance. Mm-hmm. So now a lot of people said like, well, all right, well that means we can do static, dynamic, and then do your training and stuff like that, and, and the dynamic somehow resets the body. It could be that, or it could have just been that it took you three minutes to do the dynamic mobility, and that was enough. Yeah. 
right? So, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, we don't go static stretching right into an exercise, but you know, I mean, there's a bit of like movement prep and stuff we do. And you know, I, it also has to do with your setting, right? We do a lot of adult fitness here at, at Champion too. And last thing you want to do is be like pounded out, like on a computer all day at your computer, get in your car, sit in traffic, almost get into an accident, find your way here, and then just jump into the squat rack. Right, it's about kind of like getting your blood flowing, calming down a little bit, taking some deep breaths, you know, and actually, you know what I mean, like like sinking in a little bit. So yeah, yeah, yeah I think to me, I, I'm a proponent of foam rolling and stuff like that before. I think just anecdotally, our athletes love to get soft tissue work. If we're going to talk at, uh, ISTM or instrument assisted pre, they love to have that stuff before uh, they go throw a bullpen or go throw with us during their rehab program. So anecdotally, it seems like before is. A good way to kind of get some of those gains and I don't know maybe there's some kind of neuro mechanical transduction uh, improvement or neuro neuro biomechanical uh, nebulous very which, nebulous which tends T to t-shirt common neuro biomechanical but yeah so I think before seems to be for me yeah yeah makes sense maybe, <laughs> yeah I, I you know I mean I think it would just come to the fact too like it's like a lot of us have mobility restrictions so if there's anything we can do to neuromodulate tone, maybe get some enhanced mobi mobility, some movement or something before we exercise, it seems to make a lot of sense mm -hmm. to me. So, mm -hmm. awesome. All right, that's right. What do we got, Andrew? Big man. Adam from New York. This question is for the knee guru, Lenny. Where do you oh. think the first special The knee guru? I love the knee. The knee guru? The knee guru? Kind of like that. Kind of like that. What do you think the first special test should be when watching a football injury to the knee? Does it matter if it's contact or non-contact? Would you first do Lachman's at 25 degrees or Valgus at zero degrees? Nah, I would do Valgus at zero. First off, <laughs> way too many questions. Yeah, there's a lot, go there's a lot going on there. There's, 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 there's way too many questions. <laughs> I, I guess I would preface this that I've never worked with a team, so I, I've never had to run onto a field and do a test. But I love watching. I love watching. <laughs> it's it. quite daunting <laughs> to have 75,000 people I do watching love like, live tweeting while I'm watching Monday Night Football <laughs> and trying to guess what the injury is. Um, so if you follow me on some social media, you may get, get, you may get some of that. But to me, I would want to know, A, is his limb okay? There's not a bone sticking out. There yeah. seems to be blood supply yeah, going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, like, the serious Why don't we start with, is his head attached right, exactly. to his body? Because if it's not, we're not going forward. And at then all. I probably want to very positive. Based off of my limited view of what, it, what probably happened, what, did he feel a pop? Or she feel a pop, and then I'd probably yeah start thinking about maybe a Lockman's obvious uh, you know guarding. Is he holding his leg? Oh, there's not any kind of uh, obvious you know like big grand thing going on, but maybe a Lockman's if we if we're suspecting an ACL. That's me my go-to. Uh, Valgus at zero, no. Valgus at like 25 or 30 for an MCL or or an LCL. But definitely, probably live. Not anterior draw. Not. I'm not doing. Uh, you know, Thessaly on the field like some people probably would recommend. But yeah. I, so to answer your question, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. You guys, anybody else? <laughs> Wait, what was your? Why, why does the order matter? Like. I, is he going to put him right back into the game? Is he not going to come right, out to the It depends on the mechanism. Yeah, is true. it an <laughs> obvious like a blowout, valgus blowout, um, or is it you know is it where he can potentially walk off the field if it was um, not the big blowout, but can you walk off versus can you put some weight on that leg or not put any weight on that leg? So yeah. I would say pay more attention just as an athletic trainer too, just like having like dealt with some of this to a smaller extent, not quite football. It, pay attention, right? Because there's somebody talking to the person. There's somebody at his head. Right. There's somebody like asking him questions, and then usually there's somebody else like at his knee, right? And part of that is because we're trying to get information. Like, like I mean, if he hurts on the inside, like oh, somebody fell on the outside of my leg and hurt the inside. That's literally the conversation you're right. having. Then that kind of like leads you a little bit. But then also the other thing we're trying to do is trying to distract them because nobody, you know, you're going to be quite guarded right there. Yeah. So you're quite lucky, you know, to figure out what they're doing on there. Uh, I think to answer your question in a scientific way, which I think Lenny answered it in the way you want it, by the way, <laughs> but the scientific way is I think you're trying to figure out do they need to be right. braced, yeah. do they need to be carded, carded off or not. you know, but I don't know if you're actually an athletic trainer and asking for real or if you're just following Lenny's Twitter or something but that, but like, but yeah, no, I mean, I think the go-tos, Lenny nailed all the go-tos, right? You're looking at Lachman, you're looking at Valgus, they're usually trying to do a little bit of those, but if you're really asking the question, I think you're, you're trying to make sure that they need to be stabilized mm -hmm. or immobilized, 
right? Yeah. And do they need to be carted, those types of things, and or can they walk off the field is, is, is just, the real answer. Yeah. Just one more addition, like the research just came out, 2018 guidelines for ACL, the pediatric guidelines for like who needs to be tested and stuff, and they found that no one test, it was just like cluster tests and slap tears, like no one test was like, yep, you have an ACL tear, no right. doubt. Uh, clinical about MRI and stuff like that was way more specific, so if they're not dying yeah. on the field, right. you can't just be like, yeah, definitely ACL. Right. And we've had a lot of misdiagnoses come from people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty common. Super hard, acute yeah. like that, yeah. right? Especially with uh, adrenaline, yeah. who knows what that player has in their system for like pain modulation, we'll just leave it at that, right? But like, who knows what's in their body? Like, they're not feeling pain like they normally would, so we never panic at the time and we figure out what's going on kind of like after the game and even the next day even. We usually say that like, let's not panic until tomorrow. We may panic tomorrow, but let's, let's wait till tomorrow, right? But anyway, all right, what's next? Trisha from New York. Do you feel that a certain order of treatment is important during a session? For example, if you do exercises with a patient in passive range slash mobilizations, do you do the passive range motion in mopes at the end of their session, beginning, or it doesn't matter, so you do it whenever you're free from another patient? I was also wondering if you do isotonic exercises in closed chain kinetic in order, in a certain order during a session. Thanks. I gotta edit these questions now. I'm letting too many like complex questions slip in on there. All right, so storm. Let, so so let, let's do this because that's actually I like the beginning of that. That was actually a good question right there. Is all right. Do we have a, a order of preference? And let's stick with like we'll just use one thing. We'll call it like mobility or something. Just talk about stretching and joint mobs and soft tissue. Do we have an order? Do you want to do it? Or do we just let the flow dictate it? Which sounds like she's in a busy outpatient clinic <laughs> with a lot of overlapped been people. There. I don't know. Yeah, we've all <laughs> been there. I mean, how do you, you want to start with that? I mean, you want to start with how you handle it in a busy clinic? Yeah, I always, uh, in a busy clinic, I always try to prioritize, um, it, especially in the early post-op, the first six weeks, ten weeks, I always, and I still do, prioritize range of motion first. Um, whether or not they get heat or ice to kind of to come in, calm down, get on a bike for a little active warm-up, whatever. Um, that just also will buy me time. But I think for me, go ride I, the arm bike. Yeah, exactly. Go ride the UBE for three minutes forward, three minutes back. Um, one unit because one. because you know switching in the middle. Right. One <laughs> unit. That's cutting edge rehab but right To there. me, I always want to do range of motion, so passive motion, joint mobs, whatever it is, shoulder, knee, whatever I'm doing, and then they do their exercise, and then I do more range of motion at the end. That's just me. Um, I think you may do the same, and it could yeah. be we're a, a product of Birmingham with Kevin Wilk. Um, I know he does it that way, so I want to loosen them up, exercise, and then I want to maintain, if not improve, any more range of motion after they exercise. So that's just what I do. Yeah, I, I would just say to Lenny's point on the mobility before and after, if they're there and they need mobility, right, and they're actually coming for you for mobility, that's probably one of the biggest things you can do as a skilled person working with them that they have a harder time doing on their own, right? So we do try to, you know, it's emphasized quite a bit at the beginning, and then oftentimes at the end we'll have another round. Right, so you know we will. Do I, I that. do that second round not only to like try to stretch them out, but also to like connect with them, try to touch base, how the session go, how the exercises go, blah blah blah. Because you're not watching every single rep they're doing. I mean, you just you're just not. Um, but I also want to just touch base and see how it went. You know, we talk fantasy football or baseball, whatever. I just want to, you know, it's just that connection at the end before they before they leave me. Nice. Anybody got anything else? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I'd say probably the only other thing I'd add is like, look, if you're in a busy clinic, which a lot of people are, um, I, I think that's where the system comes into play a little bit, mm -hmm. right? And I've always, I, I've, in the beginning, I've just kind of stumbled onto this, and over the years, we've kind of developed this and actually kind of made this a little bit more of a system for us. But like, if you really think about it, like, how do we layer what we do, right? It's mobility, it's control, and it's load. Right, and that's what you know. We've been talking about that. We're you know building out our products for, for stuff like this. It's mobility, it's control, it's load. Right, so we do have an order the way you do them. If you're in a busy clinic, you have to systemize what you do. I think that's important now. So that way, even if you're treating people every 15 minutes, you got to say those first 15 minutes of the hour that's you, and that's your you know <clears throat> mobility and a couple of manual exercise, whatever, and then. They go on to whatever your PTA or whatever they may be doing next in their sequence. They can do some other exercises, but you've moved on and now you have your hands on time. So you have to systemize that. All right, my hands on time is the first 15 minutes, or maybe it's the middle 15 minutes. I don't know, but you, you just I would say if you keep it consistent, then you will have a dedicated 15 minutes with each person yeah, throughout the day. That's what I did, and that's my, I had an athletic trainer when I was in Alabama, or in Birmingham, and she knew like nobody could stop their exercise until I stretched them out or did their range of motion. So it was just. 
It was lens. a system. Layout oh, lens. Nice. Tough part. But to answer your question about closed chain stuff and open chain stuff, I don't know. I tend to do open chain stuff like for shoulders or or, or, or like a post op knee. I tend to do all the leg raises and stuff, and then they go weight bearing and do their squ squats and all that stuff. Why? I don't know. I don't know if. Uh, maybe going from table to to floor, maybe I don't I don't know. And then for like up, upper body stuff, I tend to do open chain and then mix in closed chain. Um, I don't really have a specific system for that. Bonus yeah, answer, exactly. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> That's it. Oh, those three <laughs> already? The time flies. We're having fun here, champion. Thanks so much, everybody. Head to MikeReynolds.com. Click on that podcast link. Ask us some questions. Anything you guys want to talk about. Head to iTunes, Spotify, rate, review, subscribe, anything you can do to help promote the podcast, and we'll see you guys in future episodes. Thanks so much.